Hey guys, hope you're doing great. I'm really excited today because I get to start a new game project. As you can already tell, the video is here, so I'm going to make something. Uh, and like all my Unity game projects, when I start a new one, my head comes flooding through with inspiration and ideas. And before I've written a single line of code, I already have in my brain this AAA quality, feature-packed, beautiful game. And uh, soon after making it, starting it, it becomes quite apparent to me that I've yet again overscoped something. So a perfect example again would be the uh, the last game I started with you guys, uh, Burger Shop. We got one episode in, I got stuck, and uh, I realised how much I had to do in that game to get it just basically functional. And I don't want something that takes that long to get started uh, before we can start making it fun. So a game that we can get started really quickly and make fun really quickly, I think is a rollerball game. One of my favorite games growing up, well not growing up, <laughs> I was an adult still I think, uh, on the Xbox 360 was Marble Blast Ultra. It made me feel like a kid. Uh, just a simple game where you had you was this marble and you had to get across a track as fast as possible and reach this end zone. There was other things in the game. There was little Easter, literal Easter eggs you could find hidden on some of the levels. Uh, there was time challenges you could complete and, and different challenges. But the main objective of the game was to reach the finish as fast as possible. So I'm going to take that and put my own spin on it. I want to add some puzzle aspects into it. So slows the game down a little bit um, as you have to complete puzzles in, in certain areas uh, but I also want the game to be randomly generated I don't want to make each level myself uh, I don't want to even know what the level's gonna be uh, because if I make the game <laughs> and I make all the levels the game's probably not going to be that fun for me to play but if I make it randomly generate levels I don't know what's coming so I'm gonna have just as much fun as you guys so where do we start exactly well first I think we need a name at least a working title name until you guys come up with a better one in the comment section so I'm gonna go with dungeon dash for now uh, after we've got a name we need a core game loop uh, basically, it's the simplest version of the game, what we need to work towards, in order to make it functional. So, what is the core game loop for Dungeon Dash? Firstly, the player controls a ball with the goal to touch a treasure chest, a treasure chest, a treasure chest, ooh, a treasure chest, a treasure chest, treasure chest, treasure chest. The player controls a ball with the goal to touch a treasure chest located at the end of a randomly generated dungeon. Secondly, the dungeon contains puzzle rooms that will be required to complete before proceeding. Thirdly, the game ends if the player falls off the dungeon platform into the void below. Fourthly, fourthly, yeah, fourthly, it sounds fine. <laughs> Your score is based of how many dungeons the player completed without falling into the void. Fifthly, the game automatically saves your best score and loads it next time the game is played. Once that core game loop is complete, we can think about refining features and adding new things and expanding the game, but always remembering not to change the core game loop. Okay, so we should all be on the same page now. We should all know a basic direction of where this game is going to be going. Let's actually get something started. It's a brand new project. The only thing I've done is changed my company name and my version number. I have my own way of tracking like versions and stuff, so you don't need to worry about that. A fresh new scene. We have a camera and we have a light. They're the only two things. This is what the camera is seeing at the moment. Isn't it beautiful? Look at our game. Let's get a platform down. That's going to be the first thing we're going to need. We're going to use a plane here. Let's reset where it is and let's make it a little bit bigger. Let's just make it like two by two for the moment. And we're going to need the most important thing of all, a marble. Let's put this in the middle here. And here's our little beautiful marble that's, that's halfway through the plane at the moment. So we shall lift that up by a smidge and we have a marble. I can't see anything, so we're going to change the colors of these things. We're going to make a basic material. We'll call this the plain material, and we shall call another one the marble material. That's not how you spell marble. That's how you spell marble. Right, the plain material, let's make that a, I don't know, 
a prototype green for the moment. You can't get much more. Ugh, that's, that's so green. That's a bit better. <laughs> Not quite as brutal on the eyes. And we shall take the marbles one and we shall do something clever with it. We're going to actually change the rendering mode to transparent. And we'll make a little transparent ball here. Can we do anything clear? I just want it to be a white ball. Ooh, shinier or non shiny. I want it to be a little bit transparent. I think that's going to give Cell more of a marbly. Ooh, a bit more of a marbly effect. Ooh. What, a, what about like something like that for a material? That looks like a cool looking marble. We're not going to worry about optimization with shadows and all that kind of thing we're going to cross those bridges when we get to it but for the moment there's a ball and a marble we can see it in our scene right there uh, we need to get this to move now how are we going to get this to move uh, with this uh, this is all we're going to need uh, for the moment to get it moving uh, this will be expanded upon later on but you guys can copy this down it's like literally like 20 lines uh, we can drop that onto our marble sphere we shall put the marble controller on there. And we're also going to need a rigid body for this as well. Uh, let's set our speed to 10. I think will be a good number to start. And I already know there's going to be a problem with the drag being set to zero. But I'll show you anyway. If we hit play, as long as everything works, I can use my uh, W, A, S and D keys to move around the marble it looks a little bit jerky on the preview but for me it's in a buttery smooth um i don't know how many frames a second 400 frames a second buttery smooth <laughs> uh, but uh, when i moved about in fact i'll show you again if i move about here and i let go of the key it's hard for me to really show it just continues going and then if i go left and let go of the keys i'm not pressing anything on the keyboard and the ball is still going that's because the ball has no drag there's nothing to sort of naturally slow the ball down and there's a couple of different ways that we can uh, approach this problem our first way to solve it is we can give the ball some drag if we give 0 0.5 and now when I play the game if I move to the left and let go the ball is slowing down it didn't slow down enough not to fall off but it did slow down uh, we can add more drag if we wanted to we could put that maybe at something like one hello phone go bloop 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 um, maybe one would be better. See, that slows down a little bit and go to the right. But it, it, I mean, yeah, I mean, yeah. And I can control it. You know, if I want to go right, I can just turn it right. If I want to come towards the camera, I can. I can move away from the camera. It's controllable. But I think the uh, the next simple thing that we can just add is a physics material here. Physics material. We're going to call this marble. And. Uh, I think that we might want one for the platform, but for the moment, we can just drop this guy onto our marble. Did he go on? I don't know if it went on like that. It did go on like that. How fantastic. So, uh, we can make this a little bit bouncy as well. I think it's going to be a good idea. Let's set the bounciness to like 1.6. And then if we pick the ball up. I don't know. Set it like that. We hit play. Well, it done a little bounce. It wasn't the greatest bounce. I tell you what, it's probably the drag on that didn't look great, did it? Let's set the drag back down to 0 0.2. Mm, okay, we're getting somewhere. We need to make it so we die when we fall off the level. Let's put my camera in a bit of a better position as well. Let's turn it up and point it down. And maybe move it out. There we go. Okay, so we need the next part of our core game loop, which is when the ball falls off this platform, we want it to automatically reset. And I think the best way to do that is to create another plane. Don't worry, not all of the, the uh, devlogs are going to be like this. Um, just this starting one. Uh, we're just doing a little bit together, a little bit more together. Uh, let's say uh, like minus 10. So we're going to set it below it. And we'll set this to be much bigger than the platform. Something like that. And I want a box collider instead of a mesh collider. And we shall make it a trigger because we want when the ball passes through this box collider trigger, uh, we want it to reset the game. Uh, but I don't want to collide with it. I just want the ball to go through it and it resets something. So let's make a new script. Okay, so I've got my new script. 
I've called it void touch reset because that's what we're calling that area below the level is the void. When we touch it, we reset it. Now, how we start this is all going to depend on what we want to put it on. We can put it on two things at the moment. We can either put it on the marble itself or we can put it on the plane. I think I want to put it on the marble because then we could use like a same trigger that we have on the plane on other things and the ball will the marble will still behave in the same way. But we're going to keep things simple. So we're going to say using the Unity Engine's scene management that will allow us to have some, some extra stuff here. We don't need this garbage though. We can say on trigger enter. So when the ball passes through something that's a trigger, aka our plane that we set to be a, a, a trigger, we can say if the other tag is equal to um, respawn, we'll call the tag for now, we'll call the tag respawn. Um, shouldn't really, we don't like using strings in stuff, but uh, it's going to be simple enough for us to be fine with at the moment. And we can say scene manager, load scene, scene manager, get active scene. Um, brackets, whatever you want to call them, parentheses, build index, and then that. And again, I think that should reset us. So if we take this now and we put it on maximize backup and we put it on our, I'm going to rename the sphere to marble, marble, and we're going to drop our void touch on here. Hello in a gap there perfect and we need to change our void plane we'll call this void we need to add a new tag like we said so oh respawn there's already one called it is that actually like legitimately the same respawn 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 what a beautiful coincidence it's like it's meant to be and with that if we hit play there will be no errors it will work flawlessly first time we fall off the edge Oh my god, it did. <laughs> it worked great. Okay, the only thing that we've got is a lighting change here. As you saw, it just got a little bit darker, but the game has reset. That lighting change is actually easy to fix. It's just a common Unity issue, really. Uh, we just need to bake our own settings. So uh, let's say um, first bake. It's just going to be like a simple, silly bake here. Uh, let's drop this down to something like ridiculous. Well, you know, we can probably do it here. You know what, I'm just going to generate the lighting and, and I'll just bake it and I'll be back. Okay, um, I didn't actually have to go anywhere. It, it just done it because there's nothing in the scene. Uh, but now, anyway, if we hit play and we roll off the edge, let's roll off over here. The game resets, the lighting stays the same and we can control the ball again. Perfect. So that's actually um, another bit knocked off our core game loop. If we fall off the platform, the game resets. Uh, I think we can just go onto this void here and disable the mesh renderer so then it is like a void so anything we have underneath it if we want lava under there if we want just blackness under there it doesn't matter and we can still control the height of this void and, and everything. We can we can do a lot with this still. Very flexible, very flexible. What's the next thing that we need to do then? Okay well I think the next step would be to make the other win condition which is opening the treasure chest <laughs> i'm never gonna get it wrong again treasure chest uh okay and for the moment we're gonna keep it really simple still it's just gonna be a little cube we'll put the cube in the bottom right hand corner of our platform lift oops lift him up just a smidge something like something like right perfect and then we can basically use the same script again we're gonna just create another uh another script where is it here you know what sure i think we could basically take everything here and just copy this into here and change a couple of things oh yeah we'll also need this um so we're going to want to change the tag to player because i think that's always a good thing to track on the player is the tag anyway uh and it's just doing the same thing it's just going to reset the same level for now i'm going to keep it on on trigger enter i'm going to assume that's just going to work for now if it doesn't We'll just fix it. So now what we need to do is change our marble to have the tag of player, which I know there is already one of as well. 
And you know what? If if everything is still going well today, if we touch this cube, it doesn't work. That's okay, you know. That's okay. Um, oh, I know why. I know why. Because we didn't set this to a trigger. So if we set that to a trigger, it'll now work. Look at this. Fixing things live. Boop. Hey, cool. So we can fall off the map and reset the level. We can move around the map and not fall off the level. Or we can win the level by touching it and it resets. Sweet. Right, I've just spent a couple of minutes just rolling around the marble, getting a feel for it, understanding the controls a little bit. And uh, I think I think I like the controller. It's a little bit loose, but we can certainly refine that. I think it's more of a, a slowing down after we let go of the button issue, really. But I've set up a few primitive objects here, a few primitive cubes, uh, to see what happens at different inclines. Can we still go up them? And uh, on both of these, I can still sort of go up and down them fine. I like how with this one, when I'm pushing up, I can feel a little bit of resistance. The ball isn't just going up there and it comes down really fast. This one here is uh, quite steep. And uh, I can't actually, I'm still holding left and I couldn't get up there. If I, if I go back a little bit and I go left, it, it gets up but it rolls back down again. If I get a bit of a run up though, I reckon we can still go over it superb that's quite good than this uh very very steep one i definitely can't get up i don't think even with the biggest run up using this one yeah no good that's good i didn't want it to climb up that like spider-man and then this is like a, a basic wall okay cool other controls let's talk about jumping quickly marble blast ultra for example you could jump on whenever you wanted i'm not gonna allow that functionality for our game i w because you'll find out later on when we do uh, the random generation of the level if you can jump it's going to be really difficult to stop the player from shortcutting sometimes probably very large game breaking sized chunks of the map uh, if you can jump and skip certain areas uh, so i think as far as jumping goes if we do do it we shall implement it with either jumping platforms that you have to go on and then they'll like spring you up like spring loaded platforms or uh something like a power up and you can collect a jump power up will then uh, allow you to jump and get up somewhere and then I'm going to change this bounciness. It didn't feel bouncy enough. I'm going to put it all up to 0 0.9. And we can see very quickly on this start here. That feels a little bit better. There was like two or three little bounces in there. I don't want it to be a rubbery bouncy ball. I don't want it to be like a tennis ball. Uh, you know, it's meant to be like a, a glass marble kind of effect. But I think the bounciness, even when I ran into that wall now, like if I just run into it full speed, you, you bounce off it and it, it feels natural. I like that. I don't think I want to touch anything more with uh, the friction stuff or, or anything like that. There will be more touching up with the bum, 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 bum. rigid body probably. I don't know if I want to put a little bit more drag on that, something like 0 0.5. It, that does stop it from falling quickly though. Oh, you know, that wasn't too bad. Oh, that's actually made it. The ball feels The ball feels heavier now. And I, I, I like that. I like that. But anyway, I think we're in a good position here to end off the first devlog. We've all got a great idea on where the game is going to go from here, I hope. Now, I've got a good plan on what's going to be happening the next number of devlogs. For example, next episode, the game is going to change what it looks like uh, entirely for this first sort of prototype build. We were just using these squares and stuff, but next episode, we're going to be getting into some actual assets to make it look pretty. And from there, the game's only going to hopefully get better. If you guys enjoyed the episode and you enjoyed the devlog, then hit that like button. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully for this first episode, at least, you guys could uh, build along if you wanted and, and you could have exactly what I have now. The next few episodes, it, it will change and you guys won't be able to follow along quite as easily because I'll be jumping to different bits and bobs as I go. You, you guys will see. But anyway, if you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. Thank you very much for watching and we shall see you in devlog number two. Bye!